Well, it is Monday and it's time for 10 Minutes of Truth. Coming at you live with some political chingasos on a Monday evening as you get ready to start your week. Again, separating the news from the noise, the wheat from the chaff, all those good lines and, and uh, one-liners to, to kind of bring you, know, bring you down square and focus on what really matters. Truth, facts, and the things that are going to impact you based on what people are putting out. Okay, so, you know, it's, it's been kind of tough uh, for everybody, I, I would say. Some by far worse and more than others. Those of you out there in Supermax Nation, Supermax the World, if you've lost loved ones, my heart goes to you. And I'm fortunate enough to say I haven't had anyone personally that I know um, have, has passed from COVID-19. I have some friends and some people that I do know that do have the disease now and they've contracted the virus and God will and everything goes well they recover and they're they're healthy and good and that's you know what I would say for everybody and I think that's kind of the way to you know approach this so we got a very very hard-hitting philosophical topic to tackle and deal with tonight the COVID-19 and just the you know the, the carnage and the havoc and the hell that it's, it's wreaked on our, our country. And, you know, I do the Friday nights and other nights to do other things and, and to kind of, you know, speak with some moments of levity and, and to address you in a way that doesn't get too depressed, too down. Those of you guys that know me, know me well enough and know me, know me for any length of time, know I don't get depressed, I don't get down, I just keep moving forward. However, to not address and not to draw focus on something and to ignore something isn't um, an adequate measure for going forward and addressing problems and addressing issues and addressing things that are not good. You have to call them out straight, clean, honest, and true. And then deal with them, find solution, find resolution, and then move forward. Okay, so again, first things first, my heart goes out to all of you that, that may have lost someone. Uh, there are eight, over 80,000 souls, American souls, that are no longer with us, and that matters. That does matter. So. We're going to kick things off and I'm going to, you know, we're going to show you philosophically where we are right now in this country and what we've dealt with to this point. We're going to make it, you know, really simple, really to the point, and we're going to force you, I'm going to force you to take a look at yourself and ask yourself some fundamental questions about who we are and who you are individually as you think and process all the information that's coming at you from all forms of information, media, social media, etc. I can go on and on, you know the deal. There's plenty, okay? And it's not always true. Sometimes it is true, but it's spun a certain way. So I'm just going to try to give it to you, lay it down, bare bones, and we're going we're gonna, to, you know, chew on it and then move off uh, into our week. But, you know, some staggering stuff that we're going to have to deal with. So first things first, what we do know for sure is that um, a few weeks ago, the White House did put out uh, a, a measured and uh, on paper and in policy metric for how states and we deal with the virus going forward. So they were pretty clear. I mean, that one back up, KP, please. Um, they were really clear about what states, in terms of guidelines, were supposed to follow, what the states were supposed to follow in terms of a guideline set out by CDC and the White House for how they reopen, because that's what we're talking about here. Reopen or not to reopen? That's the fundamental question. That's it. Do we, open, do we reopen too fast or we open, are we reopening too slow? Okay, that's really what it is. There's no right answer. It's a continuum, ladies and gentlemen. It's a continuum. Too fast, cause more damage, more death. Too slow, cause economic damage and problems. So in phase two, the states and regions with no evidence of a rebound and that satisfy the gating criteria a second time were basically green-lighted to go ahead and open. I will, I will stipulate and point out in one of the few times that the White House actually put something out because there's been a, a real lack of leadership and I don't care if you're politi you know, politically minded, Democrat or Republican, but I think we all know. The White House was slow to act and respond and we have issue and problems and death because of it. So they did put something out. And here's the trick. When they finally did put something out on when states should reopen, they were real clear about this one in particular. And it, and it perked my ears when I heard it the first time. Two weeks of declining or stagnant COVID cases going forward, meaning the cases are no longer increasing. They're either plateauing or decreasing. 
the majority of the country is not plateauing or decreasing as of right now of all the 50 states but at least half plus are already reopening okay so even the states didn't follow the white house guidelines uh, that's that's what this is it's a mess it's a leadership mess nobody knows what the hell anybody's doing and when the white house finally put something out the states didn't listen anyway each one is doing their own damn thing and for those of you guys that are military minded like me your veterans you served or you're currently serving that's aggravating as all hell there's no clear one message that every soldier every unit every state abides by for the benefit of the people okay and that's been clear so it's supposed to be two weeks plateaued or declining cases of COVID, and then you reopen. That's all out the window. Each state and each governor is opening on their own timeline that they decide on. Driving me up the wall as an old vet, and that's just fact, okay? Those are facts on the table. That's what we're living through right now. Okay, let's get that next one up, KP. As of right now, ladies and gentlemen, let's just put it on the table and drop it because it's reality. American deaths. As of today, 81,795 Americans dead. American jobs, 22 million plus, it's actually more. American jobs, 22 million lost since the COVID virus. American debt, now I'm throwing this one in here and notice how those numbers on the right are in red for specific purpose. 24.95 trillion as of right now is our national debt. You may not like those numbers. I don't give a damn if you're Democrat, Republican, Green Party, um, Libertarian, does not matter. Those numbers are accurate. Those numbers are true. And that's a political chingasa to you. You gotta de decide on how you deal with that and what it means for you. But I'm dropping number on you. 81,795 American deaths. Clear? 22 million American jobs gone. 24.95 trillion in American debt. And yeah, after the stimulus, all these packages, you know that's gonna balloon. And all that means is you young people, that's what you're staring at right now. Because you're gonna pay that price. Probably not even me. I'll probably be dead by the time you feel the full brunt of our national debt and where it goes. Those are numbers, those are accurate, those are factual. Deny them, deflect them, prevaricate, rationalize, do whatever you gotta do. Numbers don't lie. And as John Adams said, facts are stubborn things. So here's what it boils down to. I like to go back to my, my US history days, right? Some of you guys know I'm an old history teacher. And the argument I hear on the street amongst Americans right now is, you know, the ones, and it's, it's not the biggest percentage, by the way. They're, they're just, they're barking loud. The people that say, oh, I wanna open up right now. I don't wanna have to wear a mask. I wanna be able to do whatever the hell I wanna do because it's my liberty, it's my freedom, it's my constitutional right. Kind of. Kind of. Go ahead and put that up, KP. It's my homeboy. Give me liberty or give me death. I've actually heard some, of, some people actually saying that. Give me liberty or give me death. Right? They don't want to die. Get out of here. You don't know what that means. You don't know what that means. Give me liberty or give me death. Patrick Henry. Because he believed in his liberties, and that's why we formed a country. That's why we revolted. That's why we rebelled against a dictator, an autocratic ruler, someone who thinks they can do whatever the hell they want and dictate to us how we live in our, our lives. Patrick Henry. Okay, I submit to you, however, Supermax Nation, before we finish up tonight, I submit to you that the American model, motto, is no longer give me liberty or give me death. This is what it is. It's give me money or give me death. Because it has nothing to do with liberty anymore. It has nothing to do with liberty. It has everything to do with, hey, let's open the states and get our economy back. Let's make money, even though we know people are going to die. Okay, so this is a hard part. Leave that one up, please, KP. I want people to stare at that image. I know it's not easy. It's difficult. I don't like wearing the damn mask, but I do it because it's necessary and it's required. Okay, and I try not to go, and, and, and I definitely don't get in large gatherings. I see very few people. I'm with, for the most part, just my family at home. I don't like it. I like to do my thing. I'm about as freedom-loving as the next guy, if not more so. Okay, but this thing that we're balancing right now, this dichotomy that we're dealing with, this philosophical question of who we are as a country and as a people. Do we open fast so the economy can be better? Knowing, knowing full well that if we open too fast and too early, more people will die because of it. Are you willing to make that judgment? Are you willing to make that argument? 
to say, hey, let's open up fast. Some people are going to die, but that's the cost of the economy. I'll submit to you where I'm at. I value American life a little more preciously than that. And for those of you out there that think this is the binary choice, one or the other, you're flabbergastingly wrong. And you're trying to hyperbolize the matter and make it something that's not. Do I want to be shut down economy for the next 20 years? Absolutely not. By the way, that's a stupid assumption and it's a stupid statement. And anyone flying that to you is stupid. You're stupid if you listen to it and believe it. Measured? Yes. Careful? Yes. Declining numbers? Yes. More containment of the virus? Yes. Full-blown open the economy, let people on the beaches have concerts, do whatever the hell you want? Absolutely not. And I would not hesitate one iota second. I would not hesitate at all to shut down everything if it meant we saved more American lives. Some of us are structured a little bit differently. I actually give a damn about 80,000 Americans dying when it could have been prevented or the number lessened. You can argue all you want. You guys know the rule. You can give me a call. You can hit me up. I'll talk to you about it. We can talk about it and argue it. It doesn't matter. But this is what I'm seeing, and I want this on the record before I head out tonight. This country is no longer about Patrick Henry. Give me life, or excuse me, give me liberty, or give me death. This country now, some of you anyway, it's about give me money, give me my economy, or give me death. And you know what? You do it too fast, you open up real quick, you're going to give them death. Maybe it's not you, but it'll be some other American. And that's what you have to live with as an American citizen, on your conscience. Maybe it's not you, maybe it is, but I'm putting it out there. Please don't be on that side. Give me money or give me death. Doesn't that sum up who our country is now? That's who we are. It's all about our money, what we look like, what we sound like. How good is our economy? How great do we think we are? Give me money or give me death. That's my 10 minutes of truth. I'll be back next week. Supermax is out.